cool. Here we go, starting the game. Hope you guys are excited about it as I am. It's gonna be fun. Long spawn one time, how cool would that be? Yeah. We will see. This can be a dangerous map for Zerg. I know VVV Titan told me yesterday he actually vetoes this map. Uh, which, I, you know, interesting, it's, it's, people say, oh, it's a Zerg map, but against Terran especially, it can be it can be sort of tough. Against another Zerg player, it's certainly not a hatch first map. People think it's a hatch first map in CBZ. It is definitely not. Speedling are very effective. And we do see, um, in the upper right-hand corner, a red Protoss. It goes by the name of Kershen here, but it is, of course, and I will have to switch the colors up here, is, of course, Pult Prime. Let me switch those colors just so there is no confusion. And in the lower right-hand corner, we have our blue Zerg, the Cole Rise. I believe he is a Canadian player. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I can check the bracket real quick and tell you. Um, he is a Canadian player. So we do have Korea versus Canada here. This should be a really, really fantastic match. Um, interesting notes about this map architecture. Um, I would say it's sort of worse for Terran to be here and Zerg to be here. Um, it's a little bit easier for the push to come straight up out of here and here, but even though you have sort of a little bit of a longer rush distance, what's really especially nasty on this map for Zerg players is that Terran will come up here, he'll siege tanks right down here on this low ground, he'll either build a barracks out here and float it over, or he'll have medivacs, and then he'll drop marines in here one by one while the tanks can hit your natural from down there. It is nasty, nasty, nasty to deal with. Um, and it's really, really tough. At the same time, they can also drop your main. This low ground here, I'm not sure if on this version of the map, I don't I don't think tanks obviously can't hit anything here, but they can use tanks down here in the low ground to protect marines being dropped down here um, to harass natural. Or I'm rather, I'm sorry, the main. We do see a barracks going down for Pult um, in the front of his main. We do see a quick gas going down here, so it is possible he is going for this quick tank play. Of course, blue flame planes are also pretty good on this map. Um, there's a widest choke here, there's a wide, not quite as wide choke here, but it's obviously a little bit harder for Zerg to wall. We can see he is coming out here and he is going to 15 hatch. Um, so the quick gas here for Pult, I mean, it's not quick per se, but it is a 13 gas, whereas a you know, standard ZVT build is usually 2x open. But on this map, he obviously doesn't know where his opponent spawned, and the rush distance here is long enough. Rush distance here is extraordinarily long. Um, that 2x isn't nearly as effective as it is on, say, like a map like Zelnaga. While the rush distance is a little bit longer on Zelnaga than maybe some other maps or close position on some maps, um, you do know where your opponent is. And we can see that this Overlord is going to come up here. He's going to find out um, where Pult is. He's throwing down another depot here right up, so he's going to wall off here so there's no uh, speedling shenanigans or anything. We do see the pool going down for Rise, so it's a 15 hatch, 15 pool build. We can see Pult's scouting SCV is going to come up here. Has Rise scouted? Pult, yeah, he has not quite scouted Pult yet, but Pult will scout him first. And when he sees this SCV coming down from up here, he's going to know he's up here. I assume this drone uh, will probably be rerouted up here, but he also does have the Overlord here um, that's going to be able to see, and as you can see, this Overlord is nicely hidden over here. He's going to be able to see the Warner Axe. Um, he probably he might even swing around here and try and see the gas. You can see a bunker going down, so obnoxious, it's going to force him to pull drones. You can see him pulling five drones over here. Um, he's going to have to focus down the bunker, he's going to have to get the SCV. Um, if anything, the loss, if, you know, Pult just cancels this, the loss mining time is more than enough. We can see a Marine coming up. This might actually finish. He's going to have to intercept this Marine. He cannot let that get in. The bunker is going to finish. He simply can't let the Marine um, get into the bunker, otherwise he's going to be in big, big trouble here. And we can see he is blocking the Marine out. And there's a second Marine coming up, and he's really good Mario here, but, oh, this Marine's probably going to make it in. Oh, this is not good. Rise is going to have to probably throw a spine crawler down right here, and this is this is not good at all. He really could not have let that bunker finish. Um, I assume he's going to, now, even if he is able to take this out, I assume he is going to, and we don't, I don't see any more Marines rallied down. Oh, so only two Marines. Um, he's going to have to throw a spine crawler down. Look at all the Zerglings he's making. He may actually be overproducing Zerglings right now, but he didn't throw that spine down right away, so he's not going to be able to start poking down at that. Of course, the SCV is going to sit down here right through these minerals. He's going to be hidden. Only a few Zerglings are going to be able to hit it. Link speed is nowhere close. Um, he's going to wait till he is going to engage it now. It, this should be more than enough to break it down, but look at all the Zerglings in here. He forced so many Zerglings. Usually, as a as a Zerg player, you want these to all be drones. He's going to try and get the off, but it was definitely a cost-effective attack for Pult. You might say, oh, well, he didn't really kill anything. Um, he killed one worker, but the thing is that he forced all those links, and that's the big victory, and he forced the Spinecrawler. We can see the Hellions are coming down. We do see Reactor Hellions. Sorry, I missed that when I was watching the bunker. We can see two Hellions are coming down. This is going to be hard to deal with. He doesn't have Zergling speed. Um, he has only one Queen right now. Not the greatest group. So we can see this, the Queen moving over here and the Zerglings here. Pretty smart. Of course, the spine crawler is going to be able to hit the Hellions. He's throwing a different a second spine crawler down here. And then he's going to try and swing over and block the Hellions out from coming in. We do see two more Hellions coming down. Pult is expanding behind us. We can see a Command Center dropping. Um, so the Reactor Hellions, he could swing on here and try and pick off these three drones. And he probably would very easily 
but he also runs the risk of getting trapped. It does look like he's going to wait for these four Hellions to come up here before he comes out. We can see the Overlord floating out just to see what is going on over here. This Overlord is being sacrificed through the base um, to see what Polt is making, which is two more barracks. You can see the Hellions coming up, and they're going to bugger that Spine Crawler. It's a really nice Spine Crawler position, because if you try to run by with the Hellions, you're going to take so much damage that the Lynx can swing around here and trap you here behind this uh, Spine, or the Queen can trap you as you try and do in the base. We do see the gas is down for call any his thing he is now saturating it so a bit of a delayed gas build um he is up around 44 supply he's only taking one gas typically and this queen's walking off the creep uh, i don't know why he's doing that uh that's pretty dangerous um but you, with this finishi wild type build you typically see them take all four or three of four gases right away he's only taking one gas so far he is supply blocked he's three overlords production uh, we can see Polt is floating out his, whoa, floating out his command center, um, and he is continually producing more bio. And you know what the, the most annoying thing about these Hellions is? You can't spread creep, because until you have link speed, you can't take out the Hellions. And any creep terms you go out here, the Hellions are going to instantly kill. And even if a creep terminal were well to lay down, what he could do is put a Hellion up here, target the Hellion, and it would hit the creep terminal. So this is the biggest part of these four Hellions right here. The, the untold story of them is not only the two spine crawlers that he forced, it's not the Lings, he's now forcing another spine crawler. And you have to remember, all he's seen, he's seen the, the, the barracks in the factory. He doesn't know where a push is at. And he is walling off here a bit, but the creep spread is so brutal. And he is getting a tumor out. And look, he's immediately going after the tumor. And you can see he's actually, ah, he loses the creep tumor. And that is pretty painful because you waste an inject to get that tumor down. Now, you can see a creep tumor here, but what he could really do is just float a Hellion on top of it if he knows where it is. And then do an area of attack effect and try to wear it down. So it does look like the Hellions are going to leave now. Maybe he senses that Zergling speed um, may be done soon. I don't think it's even quite started yet. And we do see a very quick layer. Okay. So he is starting the layer. Layer is almost done. Evolution Chamber and the Baneling Nest going down. It's pretty interesting. I think he might be trying to go Bane speed pretty quickly. He might be trying to get uh, Infestors out or Mutas out pretty quickly. Still doesn't have Link Speed. I assume that's intentional. He does definitely have the Gas to resource right now. And the Zerg is floating all sorts of resources. Throwing down two more Geysers is really not microing quite well right now. Let's check out Pulse Base though. Look at this production here. He's got all these Marines, all these tanks, all this bio coming out. Stim's about to finish. Um, he's got Siege Tanks, Siege Mode. He, I notice he gets a late Siege Mode a lot. This push is terrifying. The Zerg player is going to need Bane Link's deal with it. We do see Bane Link's speed has started. These are going to come out here and clear the towers, and he, he doesn't know the location of the push, and he's trying to take out this third right now. But we can see the scary... Look at this nice wall here. I mean, at least it, it prevents the Ling run by. I mean, honestly, anytime you need to leave the base, you're going to need to leave the supply depots up anyways. Turn players should take note of this. Um, you know, I say, oh, well, you could Bane Link. You're not going to Bane Link bust randomly in the middle of a game on a counter. And it really shuts down a lot of those Ling counters that... Uh, the Zerg players like to use in this map especially. We can see these Hellions are scouting around, looking for a third. We can see this Creep Tumor is going down. It just barely makes it. And this Hellion is over here. He sees that there is no third here yet. He doesn't have Link Speed yet, so he really can't take out these Hellions. And we can see this push is coming out without Link Speed, with Bane Link Speed just about to finish. This is a pretty scary push, and he doesn't even know it's coming. He does not have good scouting information right now. Because then he's running a Ling out to this tower here, and he does have these Creep Tumors. So we'll be able to see it. Um, but if he goes and clears this tower out before he comes down, he's going to be in trouble. Link speed is about to finish, and he does need to start producing links. These three spines are really good. I really like the spine location here because it's going to be able to cover any tanks that siege on the low ground. He is now going to see these tanks coming. He is morphing Banelings. Banelings speed is actually going to be done pretty soon, so that quick layer did pay off, and Link speed did get done, but he, he still doesn't have a third yet. He's producing links. Um, he may try and siege up. He doesn't have siege one. I think siege one just finished. So he's going to siege up here, and look at that. Perfect siege right on the edge of that spine crawler position. Really, really cool stuff. Look at all these spines going down. We can see these banelings uh, just sort of randomly rolling through here. We can see the marines going up here. They do have stim pack. They are taking quite some damage. Uh, so he is going to choose to scan or he's going to harass us. He's probably going to lose his queen. Oh, that's a big mistake. Uh, it's really going to hurt his production, losing that queen there, sort of unnecessarily. He doesn't even have a third to transfer all his drones over, too, so he is feeling pretty tight right now. We can see 49 or 39 harvesters pulled back in his face. He's just continuing all of his production. We do see a link counter coming. Remember that supply depot wall? It goes up the second that link counter comes. He's going to pick that off, but what he really probably will do is sit here right in the middle. He's going to cut off any reinforcements, so at the worst, his army can't really get bigger. Um, we do see the medevac is going to jump up here. It's going to drop marines down. As soon as he sees the banelings, he's going to pick the marines up and three shots on the banelings. Kills so many banelings. Um, he does have... All right, the, the mutas are going to change the life. He's going to be able to take off the medevac, but it's sitting here hovering over the cliff. And you do... The medevac still survives. And it's still going to allow him to have vision here. Um, it's really nice having the links here. Cut off reinforcements for this. And he's just got banelings and everything randomly running all over. He, his link count is very low. He's trying to pick off this medevac, and it's being so annoying. Look at Polk is boldly moving it back up there, even though the mute is there. He is going to lose it, um, which is going to hurt a lot of his vision. 
but he did lose his gas geyser here. He did lose a queen. He lost a lot of that production. Look at his injects. They're really falling behind. He, it looks like he's just a little bit out of sorts here. Look at this pull. He knows he's cutting off the reinforcements, so he's medevacking the marines over rather than running them through. So smart. So smart. So many players don't think about things like that. We can see the mutas are coming over. There's a new medevac down here. This push is so, so nasty right now. Um, Polder's just going to sit here and keep him contained. And we can see Polt is throwing up some uh, missile turrets in his base and has started plus one attack. Um, he's forced to evacuate the drones. Um, he's losing all sorts of overlords. And he really needs some. He can't, he can't really afford to lose his bailings to all these tank shots. It's going to be so, so painful. And so he's using the mutas to pick off the marines, which of course is a pretty expensive way to kill marines. This hatchery is pretty low. He finally does get it down. I'm moving the spine crawlers all over here. It's pretty smart. He's going to be able to deal with the marines. Although, I don't know. He's got so much vision. He needs to pick this medevac off pretty soon. Um, he's going to wait for these spine crawlers to burrow, and he's going to go over and pick that medevac off. It's such a precarious position for the Zerg player. The marines are always oh, the marines are going to do so much damage to this mutilus. He's forced to bring the bailings and the links up, and Pulse is going to pick up the marines, and he's going to get. Oh my god, look at all the banelings he just killed. Exception for free. The hatchery does go down. The Zerg player is not in a good position right now. He does have this base up. Um, but this contained by Pole is just so good. And he's burying units over um, over top of the uh, of the of the Zerglings. He can't afford to lose the mutas out there to cut off reinforcements. Otherwise, Pole's just gonna pick everything up and boom, drop in the middle of the base. Nice transfuse there on the mutilus, but uh, our Zerg player is in a bit of trouble. We can see the supply lead for Polt is huge. Look at these Marines moving out. Look at these tanks moving out. Plus one is about to finish. Plus one armor just started. Um, so it just, and, and wow, well, he, he might have been able to pick off a lot of that bio there. There were a good number of Banelings sitting right there, but uh, perhaps he feared a stim and a split by Polt. So we can see that the Zerg player is just completely contained right now. He can't take a third. He obviously lost his natural, so he's now down to two base. Thankfully, he's a creep tumor here, so uh, he might be want to be careful with his creep receding here, but it's just such a bad position for our Zerg player. I don't see how you get out of 